British curry crisis, the impact Tamil curry can make. The Tamil community can no longer ignore the curry crisis in the United Kingdom. They must face it head on and cannot continue to ignore the issue. Why? The term, curry, originates from the Tamil language, which is regarded as the oldest language in the world. Tamil has contributed several words to the English language, including not only, curry, but also terms like parpadam, mulligatawny, congee, rasam, and, mango. This took place during the 16th century through the medium of the Portuguese language. During this era, the Portuguese exerted their control over one of the two traditional regions inhabited by the Tamils, known as the Yalpanam, Jaffna, Tamil Kingdom. During this period, the southern tip of the Indian subcontinent, the other traditional region of the Tamils, remained untouched by colonization, and the British East India Company had not yet come into existence. The term, curry, originated during the 16th century, while the formation of the East India Company took place in the 17th century. Therefore, the assertions made by certain British authors, who claim that curry and even mulligatawny were introduced by British colonizers in Madras, are unsubstantiated. Madras was a major trading town in the Curry Mandalam, Curry Zone, also known as the Coromandel which was a thriving coastal region involved in spice and various other trades. Regrettably, these authors' writings and publications remain unchallenged in the market. Curry, a culinary tradition deeply rooted in Tamil heritage for over 3,000 years, extends beyond its association with the British colonial era. Throughout its illustrious history, curry has embraced influences from various cultures, including the British, French, Dutch, Danish, and Portuguese. Furthermore, it has even encountered the Greeks and Romans, commonly referred to as Yavanas, during the first millennium. In ancient Tamil literature dating back over 2,000 years, there is a poem that describes the arrival of the Yavanas in their wooden vessels from the Arabian Sea. They skillfully sailed through the Periyaru estuary, commonly referred to as the Great River, and reached King Chera's port. Their purpose was to trade gold and wine in exchange for spices. The poem employed the term, curry, to describe these aromatic seasonings. In Vienna, Austria, there exists a museum housing a historical artifact. This ancient document, written in ancient Greek, recounts a significant agreement made between Greek traders and Tamil traders. The objective of this agreement was to facilitate the transportation and delivery of spice cargo to the destination of Alexandria. The Chinese also developed a taste for curry. In the islet where I was born, which was the earliest Portuguese colony in the 16th century, Chinese archaeologists excavated in 2017. The findings revealed that the Chinese had established a trading hub in the 11th century. In my book, I have presented a thorough account of the relationship between the Korean royal family and the Tamil royal family. Many centuries ago, a Tamil princess and her entourage journeyed to Korea, forging a strong cultural connection. The initial link between the two regions can be traced back to the spice trade, which facilitated the spread of curry culture to Korea as well. The Jews, along with the Arabs, Malays, Javanese, and Sumatrans, also sought the flavorful allure of curry and its accompanying spices. In my book, you can find detailed information about how, following the destruction of the Second Temple, Jewish people chose to establish settlements in the Tamil region. Evidence of the ancient trade between Tamils and Egyptians has been discovered in the form of black pepper found stuffed in the nostrils of an Egyptian pharaoh's mummified body. This indicates that the mummification process involved the use of black pepper spice, dating back 3,200 years. In a poem from the 7th century, an Arabic poet mentioned black pepper, indicating the spice trade. Curry, as can be seen, has a rich and extensive history. Similar to numerous traders, the British also sought spices and curry in the second millennium, following the end of the medieval period. Before them, the Portuguese were the initial arrivals, introducing chili and various new vegetables. Subsequently, the Dutch also followed suit. For 300 years, they coexisted with the Tamils, colonizing their region and jointly refining the art of curry alongside the Tamils until the British arrived. However, the initial focus of the British was on the Tamils residing in the southern region of the Indian subcontinent. Their primary settlement was in Madras, which is now known as Chennai and serves as the capital city of the Tamil state in India. It was from Madras that the curry, the pre-Chili era curry based on black pepper, was brought and introduced to Bengal by Clive Roberts and his battalion in 1757. In 1747, Hannah Glassy in England published a recipe titled, To Make a Curry Indian Way, which featured the use of black pepper. This recipe was obtained from the traders or sailors of the East India Company who were stationed in Madras during that period and note too that a country India never existed at that point. 
This recipe further strengthens the notion that the Tamils residing in the southern region of the Indian subcontinent persisted in incorporating black pepper into their curries, while their counterparts on the island of Ceylon opted for chili peppers as a substitute for black pepper. Remember, this was the time when the Dutch had already replaced the Portuguese, in 1640, in the other habitat of the Tamils in the former Jaffna Tamil Kingdom, and the Tamils there were using chili, post-chili era. The Portuguese had already introduced this to Japan, China, through Macau, Thailand, and Malacca, as well as several places in East Africa like Ethiopia and Mozambique. We have the Japanese katsu chicken curry, which emerged in the post-chili era. Additionally, Thai cuisine offers both green and red curry options, while Ethiopian cuisine presents the flavorful Berbera curry powder as the foundation for their chicken curry, also known as Dora Wat curry. The addition of coconut milk and or curry powder implies a transition towards the post-chili era. Before the establishment of the first curry house in the UK by Sarkay Dean Muhammad in 1810, who arrived in the country in 1786, it was evident that curry had already made its way into British cuisine. This can be observed through the recipe of Hannah Glassie, which was the pre-Chili era curry in the UK. There is no doubt Sarkay Dean Muhammad was trying to serve the same black pepper-based curry. He had to close down the business within a year due to insufficient demand. During the 1970s, immigrants from East Pakistan, which is now known as Bangladesh, came to the UK. They entered the restaurant industry, inspired by the entrepreneurial journey of Sarkay Dean Muhammad and the numerous boat boys who emulated his path. During the 1970s, Indian immigrants from East Africa devised a clever plan to enhance the spiciness of their curry dishes. They introduced the concept of curry paste as a novel and inventive idea, surprising unsuspecting customers with its unique flavor. The curry paste quickly gained popularity among restaurants, leading to significant modifications to enhance its taste. However, these modifications have come at the cost of compromising its health benefits. It appears that the manufacturers of curry paste have not acknowledged the fact that it is an age-old and ongoing tradition among the Tamils, involving the use of a base and a rolling stone. The traditional Tamil curry paste is vastly different from the version that was created in the UK. It seems none realized that after the Emancipation Act of 1833, the British, now ruling both Tamil habitats, transported Tamils from both regions to different colonies, thus introducing curry to the rest of the world. This was a similar practice to what the French did with the Tamils in their colonies located in Mauritius, Reunion Island, and Three Nations in Indochina. According to the media, the flavor of curries made using this curry paste is said to be inferior to those found in supermarket takeaways, which likely use curry powder. Curry Crisis – A Call for Action The nation is currently facing a crisis in its beloved curry industry. The demand for authentic curry is high, and the nation's patience is wearing thin. The Tamils must step in and help save the £5 billion curry industry. Supermarkets and pub chains that offer curry should understand their obligation to provide nutritious and freshly prepared curry meals to their customers. It is essential to replace frozen or preserved curries from open fridges with fresh alternatives. The customers should be thrilled and enticed by the delicious and authentic Tamil curries that are bursting with taste and flavor. As we step into the new year, beginning with Tamil Heritage Month in January, and while we honor the customary Thanksgiving Day to show appreciation to nature for its abundant blessings in terms of food, we need to work towards rescuing the curry industry from its current crisis. Please like, share and subscribe and thank you for watching.